digital world. Hey, you guys know that song? <laughs> that's, I, I think that's I grew that up material. on, uh, yeah, <laughs> 80s and 90s pop. If you want to speak my love language, that's oh, it. But so it. for those that don't, I was a hit from uh, an early Madonna. She spoke about being in a material world, but that was 1980-something. <laughs> and here we are today, and we are not living in a material world. We're living in a digital world. 40 years later, just about. You do realize that, right? <laughs> you said 1980-something. I'm pretty sure it was. Yeah. <laughs> You're trying to make us all feel old no, right now? No, hey, hey. You're supposed to be introducing the podcast. <laughs> Welcome, everybody. <laughs> this is the Pulpit Aside. I am Pastor Coy. <laughs> you missed your cue. Let me do it again. Good, good. Welcome, everybody. This is the Pulpit Aside. I am Pastor Coy. And I'm Pastor Jesse. We're so glad you decided to join us again on today for another episode of Pulpit Aside. Yes. Well, one of the great benefits of hosting your own podcast is you can invite your favorite people uh, to come be on the podcast. So we have a special guest today, a friend of mine I met about 16 years ago when he was a student at Michigan State University. Uh, and he was pretty crazy, but not in a bad way. Um, and I believe, if I remember right, crazy student with the mission to see Jesus take over the world. Mm. Now, here we stand, a little older, hopefully a little wiser. But I'm guessing the mission is probably still the same. Um, tell us a little bit about you, Andy. Uh, who are you? What do you do? Uh, I I wasn't. I wasn't expecting. <laughs> uh, I feel like I have to justify that now. No, um, I think that those things. Did, describe, I, did I lie? No, um, <laughs> but I, I thought about this a little bit because okay. introducing yourself, you get to do it on a on a fairly regular interval if you meet new people. Mm. Um, and I thought, what would I? How did I want to do that given the context of the conversation today? And I had, you know, my priorities as far as. Uh, I am a husband. I have a, an amazing wife. Come on. We All have right. three wonderful kids. They are and amazing. That is um, a huge focus of our time and energy, our thoughts and our prayers. and our. But our, our collective union, our family, is, uh, is still on that mission together. Mm. And that's probably my favorite part is I'm not alone in that mission. Not that I was on campus, but there's a, you know, there's a different ingredient to having yeah. your family love be it. a part of it. I love um, how my wife and I embody um, what I would say, making Jesus famous in our home. Um, mm. Making, and then how uh, we do in our respective spheres of influence, and then how our kids are a part of that and have taken ownership of it, you know, given their... Uh, they're eight, six, and four right now, so they all have their own space and their own mm. way of doing that. But then when I was thinking about, well, I know we're going to talk about technology. I know we're going to talk about business. And I knew that there was going to be a reference to uh, my intensity. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I didn't use that word. Jesse was, uh, I think he used to say, I don't remember if it was you talking to Erica. You knew a lot of students. And I imagine the exchange was, who are you who are you going to be with today and you'd say Andy and Erica would say oh intense Andy yeah and you say oh yeah yeah that Andy <laughs> that <laughs> and was, that and I was your nickname <laughs> <yes>. <laughs> right and it's <laughs> it's stuck um, <laughs> outside of outside of this relationship and I was trying to think of a way to describe that succinctly um, and I think I, what I would say is I don't like being half-hearted about anything okay and I don't like measuring That's my biblical. heart as far as um, I want to be wholly engaged in whatever I'm doing. Mm. I want to be, I want to be, I want to, my intensity to come because of innocence. Like I'm, I'm just full throttle because I'm not either, I'm not carrying shame. I'm not double minded. I'm not half hearted. And so I think the reason why I've, I, come across so intense is I try to find spaces, environments, or structures that let me be as all in, full throttle, intense mm. as I can be because I'm not measuring, should I be here? Shouldn't I be here? Is this right or is this wrong? I've already made those, uh, hopefully, if I've done a good right. job, right? Either in the, in the culture or the expression of it, I am going you're all in i am all in all in locked in fully yeah. authentic i mean i'm not measuring anymore i'm mm. you know maybe if it's a long race maybe i'm pacing but sure Ooh. that's a little different 
but and this is two uh, sermons already, <coughs> Andy. Just keep going. It's because it's because I I don't since I don't I don't have a I don't preach on Sundays, so you, they're, they're all just, just all bottled just up. Bottled up. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, what good is it to be half-hearted in anything? Why bother? Like, really, That's true. you're you're preaching, and yeah. then sometimes I'm pacing. Come on, like, okay, this is already <laughs> good. I'm I'm. This is good. I interrupted you. No, no, no. That, that, that uh, was that was it. I mean, that was it. I mean, but the so professional that's who stuff are you? We'll a little of who, yeah. who you are. How long have you been married? We just fourteen years. Okay, fourteen years. 14 Congratulations. Years. Thanks. That is true. She's awesome. A, that's truly an honor. That's a blessing. Mm. All right, fourteen years, three kids. You said eight, six, and four. Eight, six, and four. Okay. All right. What does your wife do? She is. <laughs> uh, she stays at home with the kids. Okay. Which means she does a lot. <laughs> uh, she's a she'll be listening. She's right. school. Yeah, she'll be listening. she will. Uh, and I, uh, I, I bought her an Apple Watch so that I could get in touch with her because okay. she stays busy. Stay busy. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> she's. I went. She's the uh, co-coordinator of the Holt chapter of Mops. Oh yeah. Oh, was that like Moms? Of Moms of preschoolers, preschool. but okay. it's officially okay. uh, changed the title to Momco. And so, for any mom that's listening, if you <laughs> haven't. Uh, found your your mom crew that is that is a place to find it she's her and, and there's a whole team of leaders they do an incredible job giving um moms a, a real space to to rest and encounter jesus it's so i'm very it's proud right. of her she homeschools okay our kids are homeschooled see that's a whole thing like I, thing. I bow down in reverence to any parent who can homeschool i'm just like really now, do you guys want to homeschool wow. all the way through um oh man I, I don't think our kids. Uh, this uh, that's a long story. The short answer is Unsure. probably won't. Kay. I do not think we will. I think that our kids are just as on mission as we are. Yeah. Sure. And I think they recognize, through some divine grace and mercy, that this is a good time for them to um, have the boundaries that they have and the um, the community that they have and the mm-hmm. structure that they have, and they. F- it feels like they already fully recognize that there is there is an opportunity to build kingdom relationships at young ages, and and they talk about the responsibility they have to that. It scares me a little as a dad, because mm. um, I feel like they're they say, "No, Dad, we have to go to public school." Wow, that's good. That's good. Um, Come on, kids, that's good. You're doing that's a good, good job with them. We'll honest, obviously. My wife obviously. and I we homeschooled early. Yeah, very similar. All four of them. Well, she homeschooled because I went to work. And it was her idea, and I never would have even suggested that to her, but she suggested it to me. Uh, but the goal was always to get the kids back in public school, yeah. not only for us, but I think our kids at some point wanted to go also. And my oldest is 19, oh. uh, in college at Liberty University, and then 17 years old for my one of my, my son. He's a senior. And then my daughter is 14. She's a freshman. And then I have a eighth grader now. So they're all in public school. Great experience. Great opportunity for your family to invest in the lives of other kids and families mm-hmm. that they would not meet yeah. if they were homeschooled the entire time. And so, you know, just as an encouragement, regardless which route you go, because you guys could decide differently and decide to stay homeschooled, and that may be what's best for you and your family. But I can tell you from my experience, um, it was a really good experience. And my kids all went to inner city schools and still are in inner city schools. Mm-hmm. Um, I love it. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's I love great. It. I know we talked about how. I know Jesse, but we don't know each other. Right. That gives me. Yeah, right. You're Jesse's th- friend. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yes. Well, now I'm going to be. You're going to be. <laughs> that's the best. You're going to be Jesse's friend. That I need to talk wear, to about really. this. Yeah. I love talking to other parents who've who've gone through it. And just I it's I, I try to do the a lot of research. on yeah. How how those transitions happen because it's I know good. it's not easy for kids. So yeah, 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 I'm going to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, I'm you guys are friends this. now. Yeah. This is great. Yeah. Uh, got a common bond here. So I love that your family is on mission, and yeah, it's obvious already now i tried to frame your mission and and it was a little tongue-in-cheek but that would be the (laughs) way you would have said it 15 years ago yeah you know to see jesus take over the world but yeah put it in your words for today to make jesus famous quickly say it again you said 15 years ago the mission would have been something like that or i think it would be jesus domination yeah that would have been okay jesus domination okay all right but but (laughs) give me give me it from your lips today What's, what's the mission um, I like I a while ago when we used to <laughs> when you sing songs you sing sometimes words have deep meaning like hallelujah yeah. or 
um, uh, the other one escapes me. There's another word that's not a common part of our language, but it has deep meaning. Most high praise, right? Mm. I used to think, well, what does mean a lot? What means a lot to me? Um, and I, s- I used to say, Jesus, you're famous. Mm. And it was just my way of saying most high praise, like Jesus, I don't care. Whatever else is happening, you're famous. Like mm. you are known, you are celebrated, um, you are influential, you're in charge. I trust you, Jesus, you're famous. And so I think that um, I still probably have all those same, like I like the intense words like domination, domination. or whatever, <laughs> um, like utter and complete victory. <laughs> Um, I mean, and that day will come, I right? Mean, for sure. But I think it's that uh, I think that I would probably say that I'm. I, I, man, it sounds. I wonder how my college self would say this: is I want to give people a compassionate introduction to the King of the Universe. Beautiful. Well, that's nice. And yeah. um, which is something I, I spend a lot of time thinking about personally and professionally in relationships. Okay. What does it look like for me to take this truth that that nobody can interact with mm. Mm. I mean if we did like that's what happens when you undo the the seals yeah. right like judgment comes when you interact with the goodness without his his mercy and grace so none of us could do it and he compassionately wrapped you know he wrapped that compassionately so we could experience that how do I give people who don't have his you know his blood covering them that same kind of compassionate introduction that I'm still getting so good that's good so to make Jesus famous. To make Jesus that's famous. That's the mission. Yeah. That's beautiful. And I love the way you unpacked it too. So tell us a little bit about kind of the tech company that you've uh, co-founded. Yeah, that's okay. the word. Okay. That's the word. Um, <laughs> I want to <laughs> hear, hear about um, that and, and really about the culture that you guys hope to, to pioneer through your, your tech company. Yeah. Uh, we started... Nate Bedford is my is a co-founder. Okay, um, he's brilliant. You're gonna hear a lot about him because he's amazing. And we started Avoda uh, a little over a year and a half ago. Avoda is an interesting name. It m- means mostly nothing to most people, um, but it's a great segue into our into our culture, our mission, our vision, our purpose. Is that a Hebrew word? It is a Hebrew word. We often say, um, depending on our audience, we'll say it is. Um, a seamless integration of your of work service and values okay but um the hebrew term would probably be more accurately is a integration of worship work and service okay and so mm. um you can search for it there's a lot of cool stuff about the word but there's different areas of scripture where it was translated work worship or service in the mm. old uh-huh. testament all same the word. same word. All the same word. Okay, um, that's good. When, uh, when Moses is talking to Pharaoh and he's like, hey, we need to go out there and we need to worship the Lord, he was mm. saying avoda. Avoda, okay. And then there are times when he would say we need to, to avoda, which was work the fields. Wow. And uh, Wor- so that Work as worship. Right. And so we, we hold ourselves, we have to, uh, for us it's a reminder to hold ourselves accountable that our work, our output is in some way aligned with service and is some way um, – uh, uh, an offering to the Lord, like worship, good. like so declaring good. who he is. So good. So yes, Avoda, we are still finding our identity <laughs> as a business. We came in, I would say, um, the formation reminds me of a naming the animals experience. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, Adam. <laughs> so right. Adam, the, the Lord tells Adam, Adam it's not good for you to be alone. Let's find something for you. Mm-hmm. And then he takes them on a journey to name all the animals. Yeah. And so I feel like I had a similar experience. I think Nate and I both have had a sim- similar experience where we knew it wasn't good for us to be in alone. And then we spent a lot of time experiencing the professional world, the business world. Mm. And nothing quite fit. Um, and then we found each other. And we said, this is the person I want to build with. Got it. And so whether we build something that more aligns with his convictions, his skill set, my convictions, or my skill set doesn't really matter to us. Because we both are we're a little different in the way that we would be most valued in terms of our, our, our professional skill utilities. Set, yeah. Yeah. Um, it's more important that we're building with someone that we think um, models and matches the same core values, ingredients, and making Jesus famous. So 
yeah, it's a love it. We've been in a year and a half journey of tech is both of our foundations. He's mm. brilliant, a brilliant technologist. I uh, tech is my background. My core background though is math, and so I spent uh, probably the first half of my technical or career being in technology, and then I spent the second half um, largely in more in culture coaching um, entrepreneurial roles and that stayed tangentially related and connected to tech mm. and so both of those outlets have have been a part of our early expression but we're still finding what is it going to look like for us to be um company is still young yeah how, how old a year and a half oh wow and in the end we want to build products really that's what i hear this is the way i say it products meaning uh things uh things people buy that make jesus famous <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Apps, Any specifics on software. those products? Or uh, honestly, I mean, apps. You guys are developing. What app, well, we, we, so we launched our first product, is, is God Speaks. God and that speaks. is right, an you're app. wearing a T-shirt. I'm wearing a T-shirt. It says God Speaks it. on it. So for those who can't see it, you're <laughs> promoting your, your company. Yeah. And that was, this was our, um, oh, man, there's so much to this. It's, products are, are things that people find value in. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And it's yeah. Our, our response to the Great Commission to disciple nations, which is to teach people to spend their time and money on things that build the kingdom. Sure. And so we think that an, uh, it is an ethical requirement that we teach people to value things that build the kingdom. And because okay. when you buy something, right, as a as a person, you're basically saying to that business, I like what you're doing and how you're doing it, and I want you to do it more. Every time mm. we buy something, we say. We're I like what you're doing, yeah. how you're doing it. And so it's like an investment, right? Keep doing that. Every time you buy something, I want you to keep doing exactly what you're doing, how you're doing right. it. Right. And we wanted to build products that gave people the opportunity to do that with kingdom I ideas. So we have kind of this uh, hierarchy in our minds of there's explicitly kingdom, which is God speaks is specifically about, um, godly principles, which we can talk about in a second. Yeah. But, and then there's values-based products, which are things that are kingdom values, but maybe not explicitly saying the kingdom. So things that are relating to family or homeschooling or, or education in general, we think that Kay. that's a good, a good principle, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, and then there's just the excellence without compromise would be our, our lowest standard of what we would get involved with. Um, if we just do something excellently, whether it's Maybe it's in manufacturing or maybe it's some other thing, but we just do it without compromising people or process in the journey. Um, I don't know. There's a lot to that. but the In being high integrity, yeah, you're bringing the kingdom to that space. There are certain industries we're just not going to work in. Mm -hmm. um, and there are certain things we're not, certain ways we wouldn't build something um, because it would either, it would compromise a person or a community if we were to build it or if we were to build it that way. Mm-hmm. A couple questions. One, I'm curious as to how you and Nate met, because it sounds like this is a newer relationship, or maybe it's an older relationship that reformulated to create the business. So that's the one question. I'm kind of curious about that. That's good. And then two, I would like to, I'd like you to highlight a product or two. Like you, like you mentioned God Speaks. Oh, we're going to talk about what that. What exactly yeah. is that? Or yeah. what exactly are some of the products that you guys are producing that will you know, sure. glorify God. So those two questions. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Nate, the second, we, there's a picture Nate has from 2006 at a One Thing conference where he took a picture of Andrew Webb and I'm behind Andrew Webb and he didn't know who I was. Okay. And it's on his computer. Um, I, <laughs> Not so for you, but so for Andrew, yeah, right? No, for, uh, for Nate. Yeah, right, yeah. no, but, yeah, but, yeah. But, but, but the picture is because of Andrew, Andrew Webb. Webb. That's why it's on there. That's why it's on Not there. Not because you're in it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I, I, said, <laughs> I said something like, oh, yeah, this happened at the 2006 one thing. He said, wait, you were there? And I said, yeah. And he's like, and he looked through the pictures. Is that you? <laughs> yeah, that's me. <laughs> all right. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, okay. So we had been connected through some mutual friends, friend. mutual friends. Yeah. And honestly, I went to his house to visit Andrew Webb, who was a really great friend of mine. And Nate, Which is why we needed the Andy designation. Yeah. Was this Andrew or intense Andy? That's yeah, kind yeah. of the... Oh, yeah, yeah, I can okay. see that now. Anyways. I went over <laughs> to Nate's house with Andrew to meet him, and Nate had gone on a kick where he decided he was going to learn how to make steaks. And when Nate wants to learn something, he goes all in. So I think 
for the better part of two or three years, every week he would buy steaks from a different from different grocery stores to try to figure out what was actually where what was actually valuable about the meat and try all these different ways of cooking it. So I probably saw him 18 months into this journey and he had really nailed down quite an an amazing process. It was the best steak, one of the best steaks I've ever had. Wow. And I mean, that's coming from I've had some some really great opportunities to have some really high priced steaks <laughs> and I I will just say that I don't think any, I don't know if any of them really hold the standard of Wow, a Nate steak. Okay, uh, so and he's I got said, a back I want to work with that guy. Yeah, yeah. opportunity but if he wants to. And then <laughs> <laughs> anything Nate does with any sort of, it gets good. That's why I like to work with him. That love was it, that was probably it, ten it, years it, ago, it. and then you're right. Um, I moved out into this sort of entrepreneurial space about five years ago. Okay. He had been he had had that itch, and he had had an early experience with it before he went. Um, had corporate experience and so we reconnected about five years ago which was I think a year before he left his um, corporate space and then we kind of kept talking encouraging one another um, communicating and then eventually we said you know there's obviously a lot more to that story but mm. then he said let's I think I still haven't met somebody we both said to each other I still haven't met somebody I'd rather work with than you why don't we just do this together got it that's good yeah it was okay Appreciate that. We haven't had any steak since we formed a vote. Oh, wow. Jeez. I think you've missed your, wow. yeah. E either, either either he's given up on trying to make the greatest steak because he accomplished it, or we both um, have kids he now. doesn't he, want you to ruin that experience yeah. that you had. Because, like, you yeah. know, sometimes you have something really good, yeah, and you go back and get it, and it's like. It's, he may have strayed from his calling. I think yeah, we, <laughs> we, <laughs> we both have kids now, and so it's harder. Our he lives changes. in Farmington. Oh, so okay. Sort of All right. And you got kids. Yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. that's a little bit more so challenging. So if we do visit each other, it's usually not for dinner. It's work-related. Yeah, it's work-related, and we'll, we'll meet. So I, I probably have to. People got to eat. Yeah. <laughs> that's, but you let somebody else make it. Like lunch eat. steak. Uh, okay. Yeah, right. <laughs> we need lunch. We need I mean, that steak sounds for amazing. Yeah. And then, yeah. So Avoda. Yes. You guys co-founded this company where work is worship and service and service is work and worship and like, you yeah, know, I could see that intertwined yes. uh, triune expression. That's amazing. And that's the beautiful thing about Hebrew words. Because yeah. they actually... They do that. Depending on the prefix or suffix, there are different meanings and nuances in the context. And so that's kind of cool that you got a word that implies all those things. So that's cool. Yeah. Uh, and so I know that you've worked with different people, but the God Speaks app, let's talk about that. This was sort of the Avoda baby, like the flagship thing. So why? Why God Speaks? Why? Why? Because uh, I know from conversations with you yeah. that this is a priority that wasn't nobody was paying you to make it mm. but out of the, the heart that yeah. you two carry this had to happen so y talk about it yeah when we came together we knew that we wanted to build products and teams and um i often said that 10 years from now i wanted to be a part of building world changing cultures and have uncompromising products and he wanted to build world impacting products and have an uncompromising culture. Mm. We both are nice just two sides mm. of that. And we both really emphasize the other person's priority. We just but we lean towards our own Got our it. own space. And we wrote a list of I don't know, I think thirty to fifty product ideas early on, which included God speaks and, and he uh, his, him and his family have had different products that they've had in their hearts and even built prototypes of over the years. Uh, most of them technical, but not all of them are technical. Um, and we evaluated each of them prayerfully, like, um, and, but then also with some level of rigor, meaning can this generate revenue? Do we know the market for this? I think that's mm. probably an under uh, a, a difficult thing that we've... Uh, continued to wrestle with is that um, while God has an abundance of grace for us and mercy for us, uh, I often, I, I don't know that I've seen him get, give any shortcuts. Mm. <laughs> and it's, I think it's hard to understand the difference um, when you're, a lot of times you only have enough time to hear about the, 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 the crazy part of the miracle mm. and not the a lot process. of the, the process of the miracle that either came before or comes after. Um, and so uh, in that, you know, we're, 
we have a lot of excitement. Um, we're gonna, we want to build this product, and but we're, we've both learned at least a little bit through the years that there's a certain amount of wisdom in, in following some some ways of doing things. But at the end of the, at the end of it all, we said we know that God speaks market the best. We know believers. That's that's the community that we know the best, and that that's the community we want to serve. Got it. Um, we the mission of God speaks was. Uh, deeply rooted in both of our stories, which the essence of that is remembering what God has said to us individually. Mm -hmm. We both have stories of God's faithfulness coming through something that he's spoken to us that took time to mature and required us to remember in order to stay encouraged. Mm -hmm. um, we both have had that in our lives to different degrees, but, but extensively. And so we felt like we wanted the community of believers that we're a part of, our, ourselves, our friends, our family, our, our local churches, and everywhere to say, if God is saying something, it's worth remembering. Mm -hmm. It's worth yeah. um, changing the way our house looks to remember. Mm -hmm. It's worth changing, like putting something on the device we take with us all the time to remember. Yeah. And so <clears throat> there was... There's, actually, there's really a lot of detail in a sense that, you know, but we're also a business. We need to make money, and it wasn't going to make <laughs> any money, right? Not for a while, and it hasn't yet. Um, we're not at that stage yet because we also have an integrity to – I don't want somebody paying for something. I don't mind if people want to partner with us on the vision of something. That's not it. But there's a standard when you go on your phone of what you expect to pay money for and what you don't. That's mm -hmm. true. And That's true. we haven't broken that, that barrier yet. Mm -hmm. I, when I look at God Speaks, it's not an app I would pay for, even though it's a mission I would pay for. Mm -hmm. It is a value, I think. Mm -hmm. I'm not asking people. That's part of the compassionate thing. Could I say the truth is you don't remember God enough and what he said in your life? I could say that that is true for myself. Mm -hmm. Right. And I would, most people that I talk to about it feel a sense of conviction <laughs> when they hear <laughs> me talk about some of those things. They're like, yeah, I need to remember more. I would say... Most people remember the top two, three, four, five moments that they have. But it's the time that, you know, God spoke in a morning, and it was super important for that morning. It was super important for that mm. week. It was very timely. But it wasn't some life-altering miracle, but it was a, it was a, a day-altering piece of encouragement that he's like, I need you to remember that too. I want you to remember that too. Or there's mm. value in remembering that. And so those are the things that God Speaks was designed to help us keep close to us and be reminded of. And I know I'm rambling a little bit because I was like, I was on this thought about how, why it doesn't cost anything yet. And it's like, that's the business <laughs> come, side of come things. Come back to that. And then there's the we mission side of things, right? right? Yeah. It wasn't because of that. It's more, there's a, there's a business side of it that, we're, that God is leading us through. He's not giving us any shortcuts on. Although, we, that being said, we feel like we have a lot of grace uh, in Amen. this. And, and then there's also the mission of it is, do people who use... Five years from now, will we be able to say the people that use God Speaks spend more time uh, with God personally and are more regularly encouraged by what he's said and done? Mm -hmm. And then in some way able to say, I've remained faithful to something he invited me to, mm -hmm. or I was able to withstand a difficult season um, of of trial with more joy, with, uh, with more hope, with more expectation of his, of, of the culmination of whatever that was. And that's what God speaks was about encouraging believers to do that. Yes. Yeah, so let's sit oh. there for a sec. Like the name of the app for, for one, God speaks. Yeah. Like, it's it's such a powerful statement mm. to, that the believers actually should just r sit on that for a sec. Sure. God, God, speaks, God speaks, Coy. Yeah. Uh, yeah. He's not just over there somewhere. Right. He didn't just give you that that book. You know, he God speaks. I love it. But um, and I'm I'm an avid user. Like I use this app on a weekly basis. But I'm gonna I'm gonna hold off for a sec. Um, but God speaks in the power of remembering what He says to us on a daily, weekly, monthly basis. I don't want to, you know, prescribe yeah. how God speaks or when he speaks, but the power of remembering, talk, talk, s go back to that. Why? Because I, I know yeah. for me, right, I've been there. I, you know, you have this time with God, you open up the Bible and you're like, oh, I needed to hear that for me. And this maybe just my personality by lunch. I, I have to like try and remember. I may completely forget by lunchtime. Like something was really cool in the Bible this morning. But I don't remember what it was, you know, so 
in comes the app. Yeah. And this is, this was born out of my, I think maybe the first iteration was I'm, I'm generally a very focused and joyful person, but there are, I don't know, times periodically where I just get really down. And my wife, one day for one of my birthdays, she had all of our, a bunch of our friends write an encouraging note card to me mm. about me for a birthday. And she read it to me because she knew that my, one of my love languages was words of words affirmation. Words of affirmation, okay. right? And so then all of a sudden she started using that against me <laughs> as a weapon <laughs> whenever I was feeling sad oh, with the explicit goal of encouraging me. <laughs> wow. What? A jerk. No, right. <laughs> no, uh, and it really, I remember she would bring them out and I'd be like, I don't want to be encouraged right now. <laughs> like, I'm in my to be funk. Upset. And she was like, no, 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 you don't have to. I'm just going to read these. <laughs> I'm just going to read them. You don't have to do anything. And then she'd read them and, and I would just, uh, and, and we get there. And, <laughs> that's funny. And then, yeah, so that's one version. And then there were other times where we've just, being intense has its ups and downs, mm. right? I get it's myself. Intense. Yeah, it's intense. <laughs> <laughs> you get yourself into experiences. And there's, you know, we'd share a little bit of our story with someone about what we might be going through. And they're like, wow, how do you, st like, stay? How do you mm. remain mm, when, ups and downs. when this isn't certain, when, when, when what is expected isn't there? And I said, I, you know, I think there was a season where we just, we didn't, ask for whether or not like an answer we just asked for the courage for the day mm. and Shit. so every what i did is i took every prayer that i had saved up which was painfully few because mm -hmm. this was years ago um over the course of 10 years and i actually put it i had them on a spreadsheet okay. to map them out over time and i could see a i could see times where i had more consistent intimate conversations with the Lord where, where my, where my personal life was more connected. I could see a direct reflection on how often I was hearing him. Um, and I could see this, uh, the different times I'd recorded something. I even remember one of them is from, uh, going to spirit of Christ and somebody praying over us at one of, one of your meetings that was on that list. And so what I did during this pretty challenging season was every morning I'd wake up and I'd have my time and then I would go through and I'd find the next one in chronological order and I wrote my wife the Bailey Daily News and the I would say Bailey Daily News. <laughs> the Bailey Daily News. Okay. So you were going back. I was going back and I said this is why we have a cur the courage for today. Because of what God said. Said. Yeah. Yes, he, he, said okay, I, yeah, yeah. I filtered okay. through and I found all the ones that I felt like related to why we were standing firm. Okay wow. Why we weren't running from the discomfort. Yeah, um, love it from the unknowing of, of, you know, of, of whatever, of the situation we were in, which was, which was professional, right? I've been in this journey for five years now, and um, I've had a lot of different ups and downs in terms of what that's looked like. But in a sense, there's been no, uh, I've been not been a W-2 employee for five years. And okay. there's been a lot of learning on the way, and I started a vote a year and a half I ago. Understand. So there's lots of stuff <laughs> going on, right? So there was a time where we said, is this worth it? Yeah. Did God really say? <laughs> You have to remember. Yeah. And and so we would go, and I went through, and chronologically, and I'd say, this is what God said in his word to me today. Mm. This is what God said in 2006. Mm. This is what he said in 2009. This is why, I don't know about tomorrow, but this is why I have courage today. So I did that for 30 days in a row um, in April of 2021 um, after uh, when we were um, building integrated coaching. Mm. Um, and that's, it had a really profound impact on us. Mm. Um, and I actually have a, I have like a more sort of the future of God speaks is in my inbox. I have the Bailey daily news that comes in every morning, which is actually a summary of all these different things that I've kind of written up together. And I wrote a little piece of wow. software that does so it. So like but the, you created a software that you've collected all that and then it feeds it back yeah, to you. It's like my it crafted prayers for my wife and my kids. It's, uh, for my friends, it's um, a, a prayer request for a different nation every day, or a, a prayer for that a different nation every day, and then um, it reminds me of different uh, words on the anniversary of it, mm. or different times people have prayed over me, and I have it recorded. But it's all shifting slowly over to to God speaks. But it was this idea that I, <clears throat> what do I want to surround myself with? What do I want to remember? If my email is going to be full of stuff what's one thing i want to learn to look forward to or want to keep get me paused um and it's it's that and that's and some of these things have evolved too if you go to my office i have different things that were words from the lord that have become paintings 
um, that are in my office. That's cool. I have right now my vows are one uh, graphic design on one wall of my office right here next to my computer and behind it is as well this one because it's a simple one i was in my office or in my prayer room and the lord asked me just a really interesting question he said why do you see my goodness like it drips from a leaky faucet and i was like oh mm. is that how i see it mm. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't seem right that doesn't, <laughs> that doesn't, sound, right. <laughs> that doesn't sound good at all yeah. and but i was like convicted by it and he said what if my goodness was so all-consuming mm -hmm. so like so big that it was like mm. it was like a waterfall that you couldn't a waterfall that you couldn't survive right wow if you if you ventured in except if you were held by the hands of jesus that's mm. so good so i i my, i use words to articulate what i see in my my mind but it's really just words to me like i try to have uh a lot of precision in my words because i can't i don't see pictures well i just can kind of sense it and i put it to words but i have a i got an artist friend from house of prayer east lansing Meredith, who I said, hey, would you, I wrote it out and I said, will you paint this for me? Um, will you come to my house and paint it? And we were on a trip for a little while and she came over, painted I a few times. I did not even know about that. Yeah, it's, in, that so good. it's right behind my computer. It's so There's beautiful. I want to see it. Meredith painting. I want people to have that all over their houses. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. And I remember it all the time. I was like, oh yeah, God, your goodness is so much bigger than a leaky faucet. And then every wow. time you see that, you remember yeah. that moment. That yes, and I need you. to remember it, it. We all do. So I love it because it's so it's so biblical, you know, and you can miss this. I th like I've missed this before, but like it, it is the Bible narrative that the people of God remember, like throughout the, the Exodus, after the Exodus, through the Psalms. What do they always do is they recount what God did, especially when things aren't going good. He's yeah. the one that parted the sea and brought right. us out and delivered us from yeah. our enemies. And like, they just recount it. Like those Psalms get long because yeah. they're like, and brought forth, you know, Adam and Eve, you know, they'll like tell the whole story in a song. I'm like, well, I'm glad we don't sing this one at church. But you know, <laughs> the idea is like the power of being a people that remember. And that was like, you know, in, you know, when it's writing, you know, David recounting it, he didn't live through that. Like it was generations yeah. past. He's remembering today what god did generations past to encourage him to walk forward today and he got that from somebody captured the, it and passed it on well god had told them when you have a leader they're supposed to have a the record. law written yeah, with them that's right. and they're supposed to carry it with them and so i don't know how many of them did that but it definitely seems like david did <laughs> yeah. you know so I was perusing through my iPad while you were talking, and so did you I, look up the God Speaks I app? I did. I looked at the God Speaks app. This hey, is, everyone, listen. Right? Yeah, that's me. What's Go get the God is, Speaks app. So okay. your shirt, you know, you have the logo <laughs> God Speaks. I feel like I've seen it somewhere before, subliminally or unconsciously. In the spirit, so it looks familiar. <laughs> and so then I thought, man, let me, you know, while you were talking, I looked it up, and kind of like I don't even really know what this is, but I'm sitting here reading some of the stuff about the app. It said God Speaks helps to Helps you capture and remember what the Lord has done in your life, whether it's your morning time in the word of prayer, a song that brings you to tears, a timely phone call from a friend, a verse that seems to highlight itself, a dream that changes your perspective, or a message that pierces your heart. God is speaking mm -hmm. to you. And we believe that when God speaks, it deserves to be recorded and remembered. We built God Speaks to help people do just that. Yeah. So. Yeah. And that's just the first paragraph. It goes on to two other paragraphs. Well, another paragraph in there talking about God speaks. So did, it, you, did you write that? It, really yeah, nice. Well, here's the crazy thing. As he was talking, I was like, yeah, he must have wrote this because <laughs> he's saying what I'm reading. Yeah, he's saying it all. Uh, pretty much. I won't say verbatim, but pretty much in the sequence in which I was reading it here. So, wow. so this is a particular app that is also kind of like a journal then, too. And like you're recording. Different, sounds like devotional times in your life, different monumental moments in your life that maybe God has done. And and so you're recording these things. Or do you just kind of go back and read them when you're feeling it like you should? Or I heard you mention something about they kind of like pop up or yeah. anniversaries uh -huh. of certain things. Yeah. So there's two things. This is the difference between what we're wrestling with, the difference between the mission and the business. And um, the mission is that people would, would spend time with God hear him speak, write it down, and remember. And then the business has built something, a, uh, I would call a compassionate value proposition that okay. amplifies heaven. And so, yes, the app, everybody's going to use it a little differently. I am a hand-written uh, journaler. I journal 
five plus days a week. Oh wow! Uh, that's like my processing time. I try to I try to have two things. I try to read the word, which is like consuming his voice, and then I try to ask questions back. Mm. And then my journaling. Th so that's while I'm reading the actual Bible, and then while I'm journaling, I try to s ask, spend time talking, and spend time listening. So I try to have both postures in both environments. Does that make sense? Yep. And then. I'm not going to ever stop that. And so anybody who's a journaler, <laughs> I don't tell you, uh, you shouldn't stop that. You should right. journal. Um, and then for me, I just, I often look back um, at my journals and I'll read through them. Right now I'm reading through one that's from um, 2019. I have it in my backpack because I'm going through it again to take some pictures and add them to God Speaks. Um, okay. Because we launched God Speaks in June. So I had some that were written out. But I wanted to do that. And then also, I, I honestly just felt like I needed to feel what it was like in 2019 again. Like, even the things that I didn't record and remember. But it's, that's, like, comes from a practice of discipline. That's not common. But the app now has probably 20 of those from that journal that I felt like, oh, okay, I want to remember this. Um, I want to be reminded. I want to be interrupted with this conversation, mm. is what I say to myself. Do I want to be interrupted with this conversation? And yes. So I... In this case, now I can take a picture of the page. It's on my app. And then the app, once a month, will uh, send you a, a random push notification. And so it just says, hey, God has something to say to you. I can't remember what the language we used on it was. Yeah, or, yeah. or how does God want to uh, speak to you today or something like that. And then um, it pulls down, and it's one of your memories. It's one of the things huh. you recorded. It also does on your anniversary. It's really cool. Yeah. So once you've put something in there, I, I challenge people to, to um, always put – I have this whole six-week – introduction where I challenge people to get at least 10 memories in God speaks from their history so that it has, you know, ammunition, right? It is meant to hold. It is not useful to sit on your app. It is only useful if you've had an encounter with God that you say, I want to remember. And then its sole purpose is to be there is to remind you. Um, there is. So when we talk about the business side of things, most people aren't used to using technology like that. However, there are people who do use it for uh, journaling, so that's that's something we've actually had conversations about. Is that a better way to meet our target people? Is mm -hmm. to make it a more effective journaling app yeah. that they can just that also it is your access to or it's really seamlessly connects to reminding you. Mm -hmm. um, that's a a business direction, if you will. People are used to there are there's a plenty market for digital journaling, and um, and so we thought, okay, is that some is it that a direction we want to go? Um, and then there's there's a bunch of other things. I like I said, I, it's hard for me. So yeah, so I. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Let me just jump on that. Yeah. And then you can ask your question. So I'm not an average journaler, um, but I'm a, I feel like uh, not to confess negative things over myself. I'm, a, I'm an avid forgetter, and so <laughs> well, the app has been really helpful for me in that when I feel like I have an inspired thought, I I've disciplined myself to capture it immediately, in the app. Um, since I'm not regularly journaling, yeah. but, uh, and so I'll get it in there and then, yeah, once in a while I get the push notifications that randomly kicks me something from the past, but more often than not, it's like, Oh, I remember, um, God was saying something about this thing yeah. and I put it in there and so I go back and find it. And so mm. it's been really helpful for me in that way. That, that is the part about technology. That's hard. I, whether everybody it's uses it different. No, well, not, no, I love that. <laughs> I love finding that solution, but I, I tell people all the time, especially in business, cause you, uh, you have a problem with how you manage a, a project. You're like, Oh, we'll get this project management software. You have a problem with how this is done. Mm. And I always say S technology does not give you skills. Mm. Mm. It can't. It only amplifies or <laughs> the skills you already have. Yeah. So if you're not good at something, it is it is buying technology will just bring a bunch of broken promises because you'll tell your organization, your team, your community, your family, you you invested in technology to make something better and then you won't do it. Mm. And then you've just taken something that was already a problem and made it a more obvious amplified problem because you, you people are like, well, they have this and they're not using it. Anyway, we talk about that with I talk about that with software impl implementation all the time. Software doesn't give you skills. Um, and so that's one of the hardest things about God Speaks is that I, do not, I don't just want to cater to people with your discipline and conviction. Do I want to inspire it? Do I think it's possible? Yes. Um, but I also want to, I want to, my real goal is that somebody like Jesse says, I know I need to do more of this, and so I'm going to do it, and I commit to it, and the Lord meets you there. Mm -hmm. And then, it impacts your life enough to share within your community 
And then you are actually the conduit of change that I think is more reliable than the app. And the app just becomes a tool to facilitate your confidence and the discipline that you've had in a way that other people can, um, can use it their different way. They can be like me. They can be a journaler that takes pictures right. of their journal and, and, and stores it. Or they can be, you know, I don't know. Does that make sense? Yeah, totally. Right. Um, so um, with the app, when you capture a moment, are you typing it in the app? Okay, so you type it in and then it kind of it records it. Or yeah. Now you said something about taking pictures. So is yeah. that a new way to now also? Yeah, we just launched uh, the photos feature last week. So okay. now you can uh, add photos. I'm checking it out right now. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we just I added photos. That feature. Uh, it's, 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 it's relatively it's relatively new. new. So you can new. take pictures of your <laughs> journal. You can take pictures of a, of a person or oh. a thing, and you can add a little bit of... Um, can you speak... And it record for you. Uh, Cause I'm like, I'm if like, your phone has like, that capability, I, don't, I do it. I don't journal yeah, much, like, but I, I have it dictated. Okay, so it can yeah, dictate yeah, for yeah, you, yeah. just because yeah. my phone can do that. Um, in the future, we'll have voice memos. Um, I, we would love. If there's any kingdom investor out there that wants to talk to us about <laughs> this? <laughs> we would love to. Um, we probably have a year plus of like the of the product roadmap. Um, in terms of what have people given us feedback on, what do we see, um, how do we connect people like me who've had some word picture and people like Meredith who is Paints. an artist, mm, yeah. and how does that fill houses mm. with the word of God, yeah. right, with promises? How do we, I've always, I've wanted to connect people who have, um, like I, I write something down and I give it to Justin, and he turns it into, a song. he writes a song with me or, or just writes it because he's a, a lyricist and a songwriter. And so I have this, you know, making God famous as this overarching mission. How do we take his word and make it more prevalent in our lives? How do we write it on our walls? Um, I think mm. it, when God was telling Israel as they were leaving and he was saying, hey, write it on the walls, do this, like saturate your culture with it. We have these holidays that represent something. Yes. When something is born, do this. Why? So you can tell people why. Yes. Whether it's this animal that's born or which seasonally or this animal that's born sporadi sporadically or humans that are born sporadically. Mm. You have these occasions to remember what's going on. Sur saturate your culture with it. And I think if technology was around that back then, he would have said, you know, fill your phones with it. Mm. Make that be mm. the bigger interruption um, than whatever else is interrupting you. That's, that's so good. good. That's good. And I mean, remembering is a huge part of not only – rejoicing over what has happened in the past, uh, but also just simply remembering what has taken place. I mean, every year we celebrate the 4th of July. Yeah. I love there's a reason for that. Where you just went, and first of all, let me just say, I don't think we said it out loud yet, the app is free right now anyway. So no, he said that. Every, everyone he listening, that. get yeah. in on that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, he explained why. But talking about filling our phones, like, or mm. whatever our spaces are with what God's saying, what God's doing. Mm. That, that, I think, is really a powerful idea because, you know, we started today's episode talking about, or me singing about, it's a digital world that we live in, and, and there's, I think, this tension in us of, do we accept that or reject that? Like, do mm. we just say, oh, it's, there's so much distraction, I just got to be a hermit, you know, maybe I don't need a phone, you know, I go back to the flip phone, you know, or something. Yeah. Um, how, how, you know, talk about your posture in terms of what can it look like for us to be faithful with the tools and the culture that, that we find ourselves in, in the, in the sovereignty of God in this moment? All right, I'm going to... That's a big one. I know. Yeah, but this is my... I like to think about things in um, axioms. That's a math term that is like uh, the basic foundation that we build everything off of. And so uh, there are axioms for all major branches of mathematics. And from there, we build theorems and corollaries and all sorts of other fun ideas. And so <laughs> what is the uh, axiom, if you will, of of um, innovation and my axiom. So for example, my axiom for church, just to give context, is um, where two or more are gathered, there I am, right? And so that, what does that tell me? That tells me that there's a responsibility for us to steward, prioritize, and be intentional with every mm. permutation of quantity and intimacy from 
my marriage, which is the most intimate one-on-one relationship I have, representing God's covenant relationship with us, to being uh, kind to somebody in my community, all the way up to regional gatherings where we're representing, you know, the the corporate body of Christ coming together, no matter what we're um, like. If we really were able to to organize regionally, not doctrinally. A lot of our regional gatherings are doctrine and region, but, mm. re- but instead, if we were really, the biggest version would be a regional gathering. I identify as Christian. I am living in Lansing. I'm here no matter what, what building I celebrate with mm. on Sunday. That would be the, the, the large, so I'm responsible for every permutation of that. And that axiom for me that holds that is where two or more are gathered. If Jesus is there, I'm responsible to recognize him being there, mm. his presence. Okay, so my axiom for innovation is um, he brings us from glory to glory. And to me, the word glory, <clears throat> and there's a Bible scholar out there or, or, or thousands in your audience that are probably like, that's not exactly what I see glory as, but you just have to bear with me on this, is I, I felt like glory was a word that I used that I didn't understand. Mm-hmm. And so the best, mm. so I, I, my math brain was like, well, I need to understand this in order to use it. I have to understand this this principle or else I can't use it effectively. So I thought, God, can you teach me about glory? And what I remember is that with Moses, um, his glory came and he says, and, and he's, I will let my goodness pass before you. Yeah. And so I was like, okay, glory is where goodness happens. Like goodness is the outcome of glory. And so I realized that through Hmm. a bunch of other thinking and talking, I was like, oh, glory is an atmosphere fully submitted to the Lord. Mm -hmm. Wow. Because that's the only place where goodness can reign. Because when goodness reigns, it's either fully submitted or it's judgment. Hmm. Mm. Right? Because goodness is the defining truth. Like, that's the whole point of, like, that's why you don't release the scroll early. Because it's goodness you release. And if you're not in alignment, judgment ha- wipes everything out. Right? That's, the like, the end times version of it. You just went from Moses to Revelation. Yeah. Right just yeah. Like, okay. <laughs> but keep so going. <laughs> glory is complete. Like, and so he's bringing us into, so so why does that, my, my, my no matter what we encounter no matter what innovation we have we have a responsibility to submit it to the lord that's good Mm. so we're not like there is a level of accountability of certain things but i don't think it's an avoidance accountability i think it's supposed to be like uh uh, a genuine worship of it like Mm. celebrating the lord beyond it i always i talk so often about um the science math and engineering of soft topics the ability to i always say scientists are are science is one of the most misunderstood forms of worship because what we're doing is we're observing there's no way to observe something other than his creation it's just whether or not we're willing to give him credit and submit it to him glory so that's science math is our ability to sort of think about it problem solve around it sure connect it and using using rigor which i think is has a lot of utility um, and then engineering is, well, let's build from it. Let's mm. build something that takes what we observed and what we appreciated God for, for building. Let's, let's kind of give it some, some substance, some math, some definition, some rigor, and let's build something that sustains it. That's our opportunity to go from glory to glory in the space of innovation. So when technology, it's That's not... so good. Yeah. <laughs> okay, it just, I um, needed to pause and breathe. Sorry. Okay, keep going. <laughs> and there's, there, there's always going to be opportunities for new and old to compromise morally but i think that our calling is to go from glory to glory the invitation is to to be on the forefront of observing what god has created and using the wins we've had to observe more i just find it fascinating we couldn't observe atoms we couldn't observe molecules a long time ago what does it mean now that we Mm -hmm. we can We can, and so now we can observe, we can understand, and we can give him glory. But that doesn't, he is no less, like the only, like, he is no less capable of putting us in awe and wonder. And that's our requirement of, that's the worship requirement. Because if you all of a sudden think for one second you've grasped even a quantifiable amount, like non-infinitesimal, which is just like, Whatever. That's when that's arrogance. That's pride. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. And that's an issue in your heart, not an issue with what we've discovered mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. or what, what we're exploring. It's almost like you're saying the, the whole molecule illustration. God was no less worthy of the glory a thousand years ago when Before they couldn't see could the molecule see yeah. than he is today. It's just another layer for us today has been better understood of man. 
why he is this glorious yeah. almost to say. I like that. And looking at innovation as as our opportunity to discover more of who he is. And what I feel like I heard y- you saying but not saying behind your beautiful glorious <laughs> worship <laughs> explanation um is that uh I think the the tendency at times, you know, in our w- desire to be faithful to God in the midst of um, continuous innovation, we, we get lazy in that we, mm. because it can become distracting, we want to reject it. Whereas the higher call is to find faithfulness, to find Jesus, to see it as a, an avenue of discovering more of him um, and remaining faithful and full of integrity in the middle of it. That's, that's the tougher work, but that's the higher call. That, that's sort of what I heard you saying is what you're after. Yeah. Yeah. And I, th- there's so, I mean, we could, this is something I think about and talk about a lot. I, one of the ways is uh, talking about glory can be mm, non-distinct. Yeah. Uh, not very tactile. Right. Sometimes it's good to like, all right, well, what does it look like when it's not glorious? And what does God allow us to do? And I've, I've said this a lot. I'm, I wouldn't call, call myself an environmentalist or not an environmentalist. <laughs> like I, I'm, I'm somebody who thinks that the Lord gave us the earth as a gift to it's steward it. Good. For sure. Period. And so wh- one of the things people will hear me say is, I have never been mad at somebody who makes a mistake when they're learning something. It's like, this is wet. This is wet. I'm going to mm. pour this wet thing into this wet thing. Now, when we find out that that wet thing is like kills people when they drink it or has this whatever it's like oh well integrity and more and like having a conviction of stewardship says oh okay now i was I focused that. on innovation i've created something amazing and in the process i created something that, that was i'm not, yeah that, right. it's destructive right. 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 all right so what do i do well i'm making a decent amount of money now um i can afford to hide this mm. or i'm afraid of dealing with it mm. or whatever so I, I feel like that's that's where shame and greed take uh, an amazing innovation mm. and turn it into uh, destructive business practices. And then we have a precedent where we get, I don't know, this, this impacts economy. And this is why business is so important, why telling people you're saying, I want you to do this the way you're doing it. Yeah. And so all of a sudden, somebody, like the pricing of something gets built on a compromise. Mm. And the cost of unwiring that compromise affects everybody. Mm-hmm. Those are, that's what, you know, I don't know. Those are really, I'm not, I'm not going to step too far into those, but those are things I think about a lot with business and with, with that glory to glory. And the other side of glory is when we don't have the courage to explore or we take shame, if we're not the ones exploring, then we're not the ones with the conviction to do things well. Mm. Um, We're not the ones with conviction to take the time and the resources to spend it on doing it well. Or if we're afraid of doing it, then we're not even the ones asking God for what he wants to bring. Like, there's no shortage of how he wants to bring value mm-hmm. from his wisdom and understanding. Like the earth, the paradigm of the physical universe is, is, is I think, such a small structure to him. Mm-hmm. Um, wow. And yeah, I don't, again, I, I found myself, I found a bunch of ends and I was like, well, that's a long haul. I mean, that's there's a, a lot of places you could go, but I, I really appreciate you even exposing those for other people to yeah. maybe walk down the, those trails. Uh, B- uh, but I think you, you touched on some really important things that um, help you posture you, your company differently. In business, in innovation, there's always room for compromise. Um, but you have taken a stance of no compromise, right? Yes. And so w- what does that require? You know, because there's people out there in their own trades, their own business, their own workspaces where the same challenges are presented to them, like, you know, whether it's education or even, you know, the church um, where, you know, progress um, will face us with many opportunities to to compromise because it looks easier. But we're really imbibing or hiding poison, you know, at the end of the day. So um, what's the posture that says no compromise is and it's worth the wait, mm. even when there's less money that's coming our way. There's less, uh, you know, glory coming our way. I, you know, human yeah. glory. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know. But yeah. Yeah. So talk about that for just a sec. Uh, this is why having um, an amazing wife and amazing business partner is paramount because I think that this can be your intention, your heart posture. This can be a deep conviction, and it is, j- it is hard to participate 
um, without compromise. And it's not that you mm. want to compromise, it's just hard to recognize. Right. When because there's so it, much that's yeah. normal, Yeah. and you don't exactly know when and where things should be. I Nate and I have a really strong relationship where we have the capacity to, to communicate to one another and see a different side of things um, about a person, a relationship, a, um, a project, etc. cetera. Um, but there's so much normal that's not kingdom that, say that. requires yeah, say that. participation. Yeah. And I would say one of those, uh, some of those things, and, but if you're, we've made mistakes like this. Um, and if you don't participate, you find yourselves, I would say, unnecessarily vulnerable. Mm. And that is things like in business, it has to do with insurance and, yeah. and legal things. Mm. Yeah. And so one of the commitments that we've made is that um, from mistakes, and we're still walking this out, is that contracts are a part of what allow really healthy partnerships to exist. And so we, <laughs> we have a conviction to write, um, to spend a little more using like a real attorney. And again, this is because of mistakes <laughs> that we've made. Mm -hmm. um, writing contracts that, that use language that people understand, that we understand, yeah. um, that still protect both parties. We don't try to... There's just so much you can do in legalese, mm -hmm. and your attorney's job is to protect you, and so they're going to often choose the best protection that's mechanisms. Right. That's their, their, that's their, their creed, right? We're going to protect you, and so we we try to have uh, relationships where our and we continue to endeavor to improve this, so that when we're writing a contract, we're thinking, how would we feel if we were on the other side of this contract? How do we build something like this? So, we not participating is not an option for the most part That's right um letting somebody else take the ownership and lead and not having the courage to fight for what matters is also um i would say immature or naive but how do you fight courageously or how do you stand for something that you want to valuably reproduce how do you mm -hmm. participate without compromise so whether those are some common business areas outside of technology but mm -hmm. also you know honestly it's just like how good is the work you're doing? Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I had a, I used to work in carpentry and we used to say, um, drywall mud covers a multitude of sins. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and at every level, trim covers a multitude of sins. Like yeah. there's, there's the whole yeah. house building process is a way of saying like, oh, this is good enough. And, and in many ways it is like, don't get me wrong. Yeah. Nobody's sitting there saying, I'm going to pay extra for my studs to be extra, 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 <laughs> you know, perpendicular, straight. <laughs> I want 90 degree angles measured every time. Like that's probably not the best idea, but there's, there's always, you know, there's layers to technology so that people aren't seeing, you know, the underground stuff or the, the things you've hit in the, the gotchas that are going to come later. You know, that's all personal integrity. Yeah, and yeah. so there's personal integrity to your industry that is going to show in the years to come. And th but then there's also ways that you are, that we work on uh, participating with excellence or, or participating mm. with compromise, giving people a compassionate introduction to Jesus. And it's cost us. I love it. Um, it will cost you <laughs> if you are in business <laughs> and you want to do this. I don't know that I would put it as a budget line on your <laughs> profit loss, but it will be there. Mm. It will be expensive to hold this value. And if it hasn't cost you in the last couple years, you might want to ask yourself where it should have. Yeah, mm. where there was an opportunity for this, because I just think every business owner that I've known who's had to do this recognizes where prioritizing the kingdom has cost them. Yeah. Um, but God says, listen, if it costs you on earth, right, you're gonna get a hundredfold back. Mm. It's down, it's, it's worth it. It's and over. it's worth it. Um, yeah. Yeah, good. so good. Uh, we're almost out of time, so this is a perfect time to open up a really big can of worms. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> just because uh, I would I would love to hear your, you know, uh, whatever you call the penny thought on this, um, you know, as we're in an increasingly digital world, there's there's some fear now concerning the quick and swift development of AI and, you know, are all the sci fi movies going to come true and the robots going to yeah. take over the earth? Um, uh, yes. You know, somebody actually working in, in that field, right? Is that yeah. what you told me? So I do. Um, what, what is your thought? Let me see. How do I say this? As a thoughtful person of faith in the field mm. of technology, um, what are your thoughts concerning um, AI and, and what's happening right now? Yeah. Um, here's 
how I handle these kinds of questions. Again, this is you know the axiomatic it's just approach. The penny, the penny. Right, 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 right. Okay. No, this is <laughs> this is thing is that um, well, there's there's a hard question and then there's a, a just as hard question, and the first question is if you were on the leading edge, if you're not somebody who understands it. Most of uh, us don't. Most of, and most of you don't. This right. this isn't your industry. This isn't your space. Um, <laughs> then it's probably not yours to worry about. It's mm. good. That'll preach. Um, and that's hard because we are we live in a culture that tells you it's your job to worry about it. And it <laughs> about and it, everything. And worry it, about everything. They are paid <laughs> for you to <laughs> click and worry. Yeah. 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 You are telling them with every click, I like how you're doing this <laughs> and what you're doing. Mm. And so... It's hard to say that to people, but it's not your job to worry about it. And that's something that I have to tell myself. It is not a, and then you have to ask yourself, where am I responsible? Where should somebody not be worried because I'm handling my business? That's good stuff. And wow. if you're not, if you don't have a space like that, that's a different, that's a personal, that's like a talk with your pastor, talk with your friend, yes. talk with your wife conversation. <laughs> but at the end of the day, you should be responsible for something that other people aren't worrying about because you are responsible for it. And then if Ooh. you think that there's a genuine cultural issue that's that's an opportunity that y we are called to pray that that's like a it's it's a meek and noble and 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 uh powerful response and so um for me i happen to have yeah friends who are in the technical space in that space and i just know that no matter how good it seems or how bad it seems whether it's you know this level of politics this level of technology this level of business no matter how good it, it's ultimately government is is god's design yeah and we have done a really good job making that really difficult to trust <laughs> mm. it is god's design for us to govern well it is as clear as anything family is god's design he moves nothing without an inheritance and we've done a really good job making that really difficult to mm. trust mm -hmm. so it is like the integrity of the core idea does not mean you can stop worrying about it or, or 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 anything you're responsible for your piece of it um based on that so technology just because it's new um doesn't or just because it's good or bad and in, in some generic sense is not the not the question so with ai i don't worry about whether or not um ai is good or bad i i pray that the people who are on the leading edge that there are believers with courage and community to support them being courageous um so that they can help lead us well. Yeah, yeah. I love that. Yeah, and building on our, our previous conversation too, this innovation is another op opportunity to explore uh, the goodness of God. Yeah, yeah. see the goodness. Yeah, of God. another layer of his. Glory. You know, he's not he's not trembling on the throne about it. No. I don't know. No, and I think that yeah. I think we come to <laughs> forget with every good thing that man creates or you know, you know, initiates. This this sin is still here. And so mm. they're going to be those individuals who are going to abuse it, misuse it, going to use it for a, a darker purpose. But I do really like what you said as far as if it's not your wheelhouse, if it's not what you're really responsible for, then you don't need to be worrying about it. It's like it's above your pay grade or mm -hmm. it's not in line with your yeah. pay grade. It's, it's that it's other. Like, yeah, that's somebody else's responsibility. I love that. You just got freed. I live my life there. that way, I think, in most cases. <laughs> I just wouldn't have put those words to yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, Some yeah. people ask me, are you worried about this, worried about that? I'm like, I don't even, I, you, government, AI, I'm like, I don't, I don't do that. So, no, I, but I do focus on what do I have to, what am I responsible for? So, you just put, I guess, a philosophy in my own life in words that I had not put it in. So, thank so you for good. that. So good. It's good stuff. I think there's a lot of um, just fear-mongering in general that permeates a lot of our culture. And uh, I think as believers, we're called to not. Yeah. We, we, fear, we fear nothing but God. That's right. And, uh, that's oversimplifying as that sounds. It's the plain truth. Yeah. It's the 100% is. truth. Don't be afraid. Stop being afraid. Yeah. You know, they say sex sells, but fear sells. <laughs> oh, just way more. more. Yeah. I mean, like, yeah. I mean, wow. And you're right. You point and you click. It's almost like we're saying, hey, somebody's getting paid. This. Yeah. Keep somebody's doing getting it. paid when you do that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
click. That's somebody's dollar sign right there. Just stop it. I, I stop apologize. <laughs> our, our audience, stop clicking on everything, okay? I apologize Download for saying that. Download the God Speaks app and click on that instead. Right. <laughs> yeah. So there, it, it haunts me a little bit because I say, oh, I want to watch that, but the way you phrased it, I can't. Oh, no. I want to click on click that bait. article. I can't because that's the way you did it, and I'm not doing it. I'm not mm. giving. I'm not rewarding you for that. You're not getting this click. That's yeah, good. No, I, which is, I don't know. I'm I'm like that. I'm no, so, I'm, I'm so like averse it. to it. I like, like it. Those clickbait titles make me throw up in my mouth. I'm like, <laughs> no, not going there. Before we close the podcast, anything else you want to say to our pulpit aside audience? We're so glad to have you with us. Yeah, thanks for being here. It's been it's a privilege to meet you. I'm uh, very I much Andy. So thank you for being here. I like Jesse a lot. So anybody who comes under with his uh, his relationship becomes a uh, at least somebody I'm very excited to meet. Wow. And so this was really fun. I appreciate it. I appreciate you. Thanks for being here. Is wow. When do we ever run out of words, Coy? I think this is a good place to stop. <laughs> stop the podcast. Oh, I, I haven't run out. <laughs> oh, I I well, uh, Thanks for listening. <laughs> uh, <to> <laughs> we'll put a side podcast. Uh, we're so excited that you joined us. Thanks again for being here. And we look forward to coming to you again with another episode of Pulpit Aside. But until that time, Again, God bless, take care, be safe, and we will see you again soon. And download the God Speaks app. <laughs> Please. <laughs> Y'all take care. <laughs>